Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-3002. On Monday, July 28, 2014 at 12.50 p.m., K. Thomas Thomas at Foundation.scp wrote R. As per 05 1's instructions, I have sent you a copy of 3002's file. Let me know if you need anything else. Dr. K. Thomas Information and Memetics Division Site 82 Thomas at Foundation.scp Document prepared by Dr. Daryl Lloyd Date 2014-07-20 Item Number SCP-3002 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures A single prisoner affected by SCP-3002 is to be kept for the purposes of testing and analysis. They will be held in a standard humanoid containment cell in Site-41. Verbal and physical interaction is to be limited to approved testing. The remaining prisoners and staff members of South Rock Penitentiary have been given Class B amnestics and are to be monitored for any reoccurrence of SCP-3002. Description SCP-3002 refers to a specific memory shared by 85% of the prisoner population in the South Rock Penitentiary, located near Lafayette, Indiana. Affected inmates are all able to recall a specific day from their childhood. Specific dates vary between subjects, but the majority remember this day occurring sometime between the ages of 10 to 13. SCP-3002 accounts consist of the individual walking through or playing in a forested garden with their best friend at the time. At some point in their memory, inmates recall getting into an argument with their friend. Several accounts have details that conflict with the person's actual life, as several subjects did not live in or travel to locations with forests until their adult life. SCP-3002 was originally discovered when Dr. Susan Fairbank, a psychologist working at the prison, noticed a large amount of inmates mentioning specific memories that all seemed to be identical. The incident was brought to the attention of the Foundation after agents monitoring a message board concerning psychology for a different anomaly noticed Dr. Fairbanks' account of the shared memory. At the time of initial containment, inmates were able to recall details of SCP-3002 with eidetic clarity. After several interviews, the subjects began to recall progressively less detail in SCP-3002 to the point where recollection of the affected memory was similar to normal memories. The reason behind this is unclear. Addendum 3002-1 John Bales was incarcerated in South Rock Penitentiary in 2006 for multiple accounts of breaking and entering, aggravated assault, and vehicular manslaughter. Dr. Lloyd was chosen to conduct this interview. Begin log. Dr. Lloyd enters the interview room and takes a seat. Vailsh was lead into the room shortly after and secured to the table. You know, I kind of dig these new blocks, but I thought I wasn't in for a transfer. Well, it's not a normal transfer, and most likely won't be permanent. I'm Dr. Lloyd. I have a few questions to ask you. Well that's a shame, you folks got good grub. Right. Would you like some water or something else to drink before we begin? A, sure. Why not, right? The water will be here in a moment. Now, John, if John is what you go by, I want you to think back to your childhood. Are there any memories that stand out to you? Fun birthdays? Broken bones? Days in the park? Anything? Subject waves hand dismissively, call me whatever. But why do you care? You some sort of shrink? Please answer the question, John. Fine, fine, whatever. Subject is silent for several seconds and looks contemplative, giving it some thought. I remember the 17th of January, 1997. 
Me and John were playing in Brum Woods, a, uh, park by where we grew up. It was between me and John, so we. John? Oh yeah, sorry. John was a kid I spent a lot of time with when we were kids. I went by Joey back then. John Denuncio one was his name, I think. The John Denuncio mention was confirmed to be an actual person through census records and social media. He is currently living in Lansing, Michigan. Observation has revealed no anomalous effects. An auxiliary staff enters the room, delivers several bottles of water, and exits. Anyways, we were just messing around, being dicks to some squirrels. It had been cloudy for a while, but it was otherwise a great day, that we just wanted to get out of the house. As we were talking, we got to the topic of school. A new kid had just started a class. I think her family moved from Slovakia or something. But John just started going on and on and on about how much of a fuck she was, kinda being racist. That was just fucking weird. I'd known John forever, and he was always nice to everyone. Did you do anything about his, uh, ranting? Why yeah. I called him out on that shit. I mean, his mom was Polish. God, I don't know what happened, but what he said just got under my skin. After I yelled at him, we just sorta of shut up and went our separate ways. Did anything else of note happen? Subject sighs and is silent for several seconds, yeah. Lily found me. Was she a friend of yours? Yeah, she was always a little weird. I think she was. Subject gesticulates at his head, you know. Like, when she found me in the park, the first thing she did was get really close, put her hands on my shoulders, and asked me super seriously if I remembered her, and then just went on and on about some school project. Honestly, how could I forget Lily, she was always. Subject is silent for several seconds, huh? I can't actually remember. Can you at least recall what she looked like? Yeah, she had super blonde hair, I think, and she, subject looks confused and remains silent for several seconds, I I can't remember nothing. But that's not right, she was one of my best friends. Was she? I swear I know her, but I, subject puts his face in his hands. Please try to be calm. We'll have you transferred back to your cell shortly. End log. After several interviews. Multiple common details could be found between all accounts of SCP-3002. These include the weather being cloudy but warm, an argument with a friend concerning a new child in school, and the presence of a female child with blonde hair, most often described as Slovakian or Eastern European. You have new unread messages in your inbox. On Tuesday, December 15, 2015 at 8.03 p.m., 05-105 underscore 1 at foundation.scp, wrote. R? I'm not sure if this means she's back or if these are just jumbles of her memories. Thoughts? Is there a possibility Project Lethe had additional side effects we didn't account for? I want to make sure this won't come back to hurt us. Keep an eye on this. A. Veles. 05 Command. 05 underscore 1 at foundation.scp Document prepared by Dr. Daryl Lloyd Date 2015-12-13 Warning, the following document contains a Class 2 info hazard, mild danger. The medic safety procedures enacted using Seed SX-82 HPKL-4 Item number SCP-3002 Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures A single written account of SCP-3002 has been stored in Site-41's anomalous document vault. Testing must be performed by at least three staff members with O3-3002 security clearance. The test subject and any personnel who does not have an active CEL-2 memetic countermeasure must be given Class C amnestics following the test. All documentation concerning SCP-3002 must have memetic countermeasures able to suppress a Class II info hazard. In addition, documentation is not allowed to leave the SCP-3002 research space or be shown to personnel not on the SCP-3002 project. 
A single person from the initial group discovered to have been affected by SCP-3002 is to be kept in a standard humanoid containment cell, for the purpose of long-term study and analysis of SCP-3002 exposure. If any person is discovered to have been affected by SCP-3002, they are to be given Class C or Class B amnestics, depending on when it was determined they were initially contaminated. Currently, a means to mimetically or physically identify a person affected by SCP-3002 without the need for vocal confirmation is being researched, tentatively titled Project Bethilka. Speak to Dr. Lloyd for more information on this project. Non-emergency update slash slash 2016 Project Veselka has begun final testing with early trials showing great success in identifying affected individuals without the need for an interview. Instructions and equipment to properly use the project are being shipped to foundation sites and operatives in Indiana and parts of Illinois. Assigned agents should begin searching high population areas such as Indianapolis and Chicago first, before moving towards low population areas. Description SCP-3002 is a Class II contagious mimetic hazard with a limited effect on the memories of subjects exposed to it. The anomaly implants a memory within the subject's mind which subjects identify as their own. SCP-3002 is transmitted through any communication describing the anomalous memory, including text and speech. An SCP-3002 memory is typically set in the subject's youth. All accounts have the subject spending time in a local park with the person they considered their best friend. Several details are consistent between all memories, including the fact that the day in question was cloudy, but fairly warm, that the subject and their friend got into an argument about a new child at school, and that the new child was a Slovakian immigrant by the name of Lily Veselka labeled SCP-3002-1. Occasionally, subjects will recall Lily sitting on a bench near them or asking them specific questions. All other details differ between subjects. SCP-3002-1 is most often described as having pale blonde hair and appearing anemic. Subjects recall her asking them very specific questions, generally about herself or a project that is assumed to be related to school. SCP-3002 was originally discovered when a psychologist working at South Rock Penitentiary in northwestern Indiana noticed a large amount of inmates mentioning identical memories. Once the foundation was involved, over 85% of the prisoner population appeared to have been affected by SCP-3002. The anomaly was documented and labeled as low-priority research. When initially documented, affected inmates displayed a perfect recollection, however, as interviews and testing progressed through the affected prisoners, recollections of the anomalous memory began to show progressively fewer details. Incident 3002-2 On H slash H slash 2016, three staff members attempted to access SCP-3002's documentation despite either not having proper clearance or not having reasonable, prior knowledge of SCP-3002. The access log from that day has been included below. Time User Position Terminal Action 3.15 p.m. JBAS 1 Janitor, 1 slash TPF 1408 PC 41-8 Improper Clearance, Access Denied 3.20 p.m. RK-12 Active Agent 2 slash PF-1408 PC-41-92 Improper Clearance, Access Denied. 3.40 p.m. Vanderd 8 Senior Researcher 4 slash LPF-1408 PC-41-29 Access Granted, Minor Edits Made. 6.25 p.m. Raise a Hit slash Dash edits reverted. 6:35 p.m. Vanderd 8 Senior Researcher 4 slash LPF 1408 PC 41-8 access granted. Minor edits made. 6:40 p.m. Raise a hit slash dash edits reverted. Fall locked.
RISA officials conducted interviews with and amnesticized all three individuals. The interview with researcher Vanderbilt has been logged below. Begin log. RISA officer Whitley enters the interrogation room. Dr. Vanderbilt has been previously placed in the room by RISA security operatives. Dr. Damien Vanderbilt, I am Officer Whitley with the Records and Information Security Administration. I am speaking with you today due to concern over your recent edits to the documentation of a certain anomaly. Subject appears confused, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about, son. Dr. Vanderbilt, if you could please refer to me as Whitley or Officer Whitley. The documentation in question is for SCP-3002. Yesterday evening, edits were made to the document using your account and personal terminal. I apologize, officer, but I'm still not sure which anomaly that is. I am staffed with several projects right now, and I was working on several files and reports, all of which are within my purview to edit. RISA officer Whitley opens their briefcase and produces a folder containing a physical copy of SCP-3002's documentation. Oh, right, that anomaly. I remembered seeing a few minor errors, so I went and fixed them when I had some time to myself. According to our records, this was the first time you have accessed SCP-3002's documentation. Are you sure? because I swear I've seen this before. Subject is silent for several seconds, oh, wait. I do remember, I saw it over Lloyd's shoulder while I was walking to get lunch. That is impossible. Due to the nature of SCP-3002, all information and documentation can only be accessed in a controlled environment. This is enforced through a specifically created memetic lock which you bypassed using administrative privileges. Okay, but it doesn't change the fact that all I did was a few minor grammatical edits. That also appears to be false. While grammatical edits were made, you also edited several instances of the phrase SCP-3002 and variations thereof to Lily Vazelka. You also removed the line specifying that the being in associated memories was Slovakian. But she's not Slovakian. I've known her since I was a kid, and granted she does have an accent, she is not Slovakian. Our reports are supposed to be factual, so I was making sure it was. And now that I think about it, I don't remember where she's from. Thank you for your cooperation, Dr. Vanderbilt. End log. Dr. Vanderbilt was subsequently identified to have been affected by SCP-3002. He was given Class B amnestics and relocated to Site 726. Dr. Lloyd was investigated for improper handling of SCP documentation, however, it was determined that Lloyd had never brought SCP-3002's files outside of its specified research area, which Vanderbilt had no access to. It is currently unknown how SCP-3002 was able to affect him, as no vector of transmission could be determined. You have new unread messages in your inbox. On Monday, August 8, 2016 at 8.49 a.m., 05 underscore 2 at foundation.scp, wrote, Ah. Uh, it appears this is not a side effect, as Veles thought. She seems to be specifically targeting people who know about Lethe. I sent RRH to take care of any personnel we had on the project and anything left at Site E, but they didn't have time to do much there before they had to leave to avoid being intercepted. E. Perrin 05 Command 05 underscore 2 at foundation.scp Document prepared by Dr. Daryl Lloyd Date 2016-08-04 Warning the following document contains a Class X info hazard, extreme danger. Memetic safety procedures enacted. For personnel with proper clearance, multiple high-intensity memetic countermeasures have been spread randomly throughout the document. Attempting to access this document with improper clearance will result in anti-memetic suppression. Seed, 
LSP 28S Zuge 3 I2. Item number SCP 3002. Object class Keter. Special Containment Procedures All text containing SCP-3002 must be destroyed, aside from official SCP documentation. Access to SCP-3002 documentation is limited to personnel with Level 4 3002 security clearance or higher. Administrator override has been revoked, with the exception of O5 Command and the current Director of the Records and Information Security Administration. Procedure Vesoka has been updated to include a memetic trigger which can be used to identify affected persons. If an affected person is detected, they are to be sedated using ranged weaponry and collected or terminated. Depending on their prominence or importance, an affected individual may be surgically amnesticized. If all memories have been contaminated, or a sufficiently large proportion so as to impede normal functioning following surgery, the affected subject may be terminated with standard Foundation protocols being enacted for concealing their death. All Foundation personnel above Level 3 clearance are to be considered important individuals if they are discovered to have been affected. Surgical removal of memories has shown to be the only reliable way to remove SCP-3002 from a person. Pharmaceutical and aerial amnestics have failed to remove the anomaly in all cases since a slash Slash 2016. Any print companies or websites that are actively creating content containing SCP-3002, whether knowingly or not, are to be shut down and their owners terminated. All content they have created is to be destroyed. No testing or interviews may be held concerning SCP-3002 without the express permission of the current project head. At the time of this writing, current project head is Dr. Lloyd. Description SCP-3002 is a Class X contagious memetic hazard with wide-ranging effect on the memories of subjects exposed to it. The anomaly can remove, alter, or replace any memory of the subject, and can create new memories in the subject which are not based on the subject's actual experience. SCP-3002 is capable of affecting declarative memories, declarative or explicit memories, are memories involving personal experiences or factual information, and implicit memories. Implicit or procedural memories are memories acquired in use unconsciously, typically referred to as muscle memory. Affected subjects identify altered memories as their own, and will behave accordingly. In this way, SCP-3002 has the ability to influence the personalities and actions of subjects. The transmission vector for SCP-3002 was originally believed to be the communication of a particular false memory, involving a childhood walk in the woods, an argument with a friend, and an immigrant girl named Lily Vasilka. It has since been determined that the communication of any memory by an affected subject can lead to SCP-3002 infection. Communication can be by way of text, speech, electronic correspondence, mathematical formulas, and thought. In the case of telepathic entities or equipment, while transmission may not include references to the Lily Vasilka false memory, persons affected by SCP-3002 will generally recall a humanoid female by that name forming part of unrelated memories or experiences. This entity, referred to as SCP-3002-1, is described as having extremely pale blonde hair, appearing anemic, and being a childhood friend originally from an Eastern European country. In affected memories, SCP-3002-1 is often remembered approaching subjects and asking them questions pertaining to herself or an unspecified project, such as what do you know about me? Or has the project finished? SCP-3002 has avoided containment by displaying extremely adaptive behavior. Due to its adaptive behavior, it has been theorized that SCP-3002 or SCP-3002-1 may be sapient. Epidemiological studies appear to indicate it is deliberately targeting individuals who create large amounts of information or people who do large amounts of research on Slavic or Eastern European history and geography. SCP-3002 was originally discovered in 2014, 
when a prison psychologist reported that a large number of inmates appeared to have extremely similar memories regarding a specific day from their childhoods. When initially contained, it was believed the anomaly was a simple shared memory. However, further research has revealed additional effects not present or not noticed during initial containment. Due to SCP-3002's unknown effects at the time, it is believed that much of the prison staff was contaminated by the anomaly and are currently unknowingly acting as specters to spread it. While specific data is still being gathered, it is suspected much of the population of the Midwest USA has been exposed to SCP-3002. Addendum 3002-4, approximately four months after conducting interview 3002-3, RISA officer Whitley lost control of their vehicle during a vacation that they scheduled following the previous interview. While not fatal, Officer Whitley did suffer severe spinal injuries. A RISA official who initially spoke to Whitley regarding the incident noted their unusual behavior and correlated it back to the known effects of SCP-3002. Following this, Dr. Lloyd was contacted to conduct an interview with Whitley. Begin log. Dr. Lloyd enters RISA Officer Whitley's room in Medical Site 923 and activates a physical memetic countermeasure designed as part of Project Vesselka. Whitley, Dr. Lloyd, it's a pleasure to see you. Likewise, Whit. Are they treating you well here? Comfortable? Food decent? Whitley, yes, yes, and I'd rather not say. Lloyd claps his hands together, so, Jen told me you've been a bit under the weather, in regards to your... Lloyd makes a motion, pointing to his head. Whitley, to my knowledge, no. Right, uh, so you remember a few weeks ago you talked to Vanderbilt about Lily, er, SCP-3002. Whitley, oh yes. I apologize, my injury has caused my memory to be less than reliable lately. Do you remember, sometime in your past or childhood, meeting a girl by the name of Lily Veselka? Think closely, she doesn't like to be thought about when she doesn't want to be. Whitley, I cannot recall anyone by that name. Sighs, all right, let's shift focus. Your recent actions have been strange, unnatural. What have you done recently, why did you go on vacation? Whitley, for some time, I had felt a mild compulsion to do research on a particular topic, specifically within Foundation files and knowledge bases. Did you act on that urge at all, Whit? I need to know. Whitley, negative, doctor. I recognized the possible presence of a harmful meme and took the proper countermeasures to remove it. Frowns, is that all? Whitley, no once I had the threat properly removed I performed this research on my own volition to satisfy my own curiosity. I found several mentions of an entity similar to SCP-3002 in a certain project working under the title Lethe. Yes, but what did you find, Wit? I don't have all day. What did you learn about Lily? Whitley, I would rather not say. My vehicular collision was not an accident, despite security footage showing otherwise. I was pressured off the road by the sudden acts of three otherwise unrelated vehicles, working in tandem. Whitley, this is your last chance to answer. I believe you are contaminated by SCP-3002 and are deliberately withholding information to interfere with research. Whitley, Dr. Lloyd, I do not adequately feel I can trust you. I apologize, but I do not feel I would like to continue this interview. Whitley was unresponsive to all other questions. End log. It was determined RISA officer Whitley had been affected by SCP-3002 since their interaction with Dr. Vanderbilt. Due to the disruption and danger Whitley posed to the Foundation and SCP-3002, they were recommended for termination. Termination was carried out on slash slash 2016 by the use of lethal injection. Exploration Log 3002-5, 
following information extracted from redacted agents were dispatched to the Uzansky National Park on the western edge of Ukraine. Agents discovered a ruined subterranean research facility that appeared to have been abandoned since 2013. Markings and documents found in the facility indicate it was associated with the foundation. No record of a facility in this location exists in Ukrainian or foundation records. Despite the general condition of the facility indicating a long period of abandonment, there was some evidence of recent activity. Large amounts of documents and papers were found burnt and several computers were found to be missing memory and storage devices. One of the facility's furnaces was discovered to have been activated shortly before the agent's arrival. The ashes inside were later analyzed and determined to contain traces of human DNA matching SCP. While searching through the facility, agents discovered an office area with several piles of burnt documents. One document was found in a readable state following chemical treatment. Venice I do not believe continuing active work on Project Lethe is a productive use of our resources. While Lethe has been an invaluable tool for averting broken masquerade-type scenarios, having the project rely on a single anomaly has been causing undue stress in the subject. She has been displaying decreasingly less motor and cognitive function, which may be a consequence of the invasive equipment being used for the procedure. As an example of her cognitive deterioration, she does not respond or register her previous name or designation. In addition to that, she has been becoming increasingly less willing to work with the technicians, to the point of resorting to self-harm in attempts to avoid the procedures. At the current moment, she is under constant observation due to the fact that she attempted suicide several days ago. We're not entirely sure how, but it is currently believed she hid a dining utensil during a meal, and sharpened it over the next few weeks. We have previously attempted to avoid this type of emotional distress by letting her participate in the various hobbies or activities she enjoyed prior to containment, such as photography and reading. With all that said, I do believe a controllable mass amnestic or memory-altering anomaly is practical in the event of a broken masquerade scenario, so continuing research and development in this field would be wise. As we know for a fact that the mimetic trigger used in Lethe is present in all but a negligible amount of the population, perhaps we could alter it to give us further control over their memories, instead of acting as an anchoring point for our subject. Since we've included the trigger with the neural archetype scans from Yellowstone, a procedure that is not reliant on a human subject would allow for continued use past the lifespan of our current subject. Perron While investigating the facility, Agents discovered a surgical theater fitted with equipment used for invasive neurosurgery. Medical documents and restraints found in the room indicate the subject or subjects operated in this location were conscious during the length of the procedures. Where on the equipment indicates frequent usage. You are viewing an archived version of SCP-3002. Would you like to see current documentation? Item Number SCP-3002 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures See Document 3002-6 All contaminated people must be destroyed, including former staff, family, and acquaintances. Staff must be vetted by either 05-1 or 05-2 before accessed to this document or any remaining staff is allowed. Description SCP-3002 is a sapient mimetic entity capable of and currently attempting to create an MK-class end-of-the-world scenario. Total loss of human consciousness SCP-3002 does not have a definite form, instead, it resides in any information or memory to which it has access. While within a person's mind, SCP-3002 is capable of mimicking, altering, and removing their memories. There does not seem to be a limit to the changes the entity is capable of performing. When SCP-3002 mimics the memory or piece of information, the original information becomes an additional instance of the anomaly. In doing this, the anomaly is capable of being present in all information and memories of a person. Once all facets of a person's mind have been contaminated, the person effectively loses conscious control of their bodies. 
Generally SCP-3002 allows her victims to live and act normally, however when she encounters an unexposed person, she will influence all people in the area to converge on the person and forcefully expose them. While being controlled by SCP-3002, victims show no self-preservation instincts. SCP-3002 is extremely hostile and is actively attempting to find and kill or contaminate all remaining Foundation personnel. She seems to be searching for any personnel involved with Project Lethe and Site-E, an undocumented Foundation research facility located in Uzansky National Park. SCP-3002 is capable of spreading between people through the exchange of information. As she is able to mimic any information, all information is considered a vector of SCP-3002. It is currently believed that 78% of the human population is contaminated by the entity, and that 84% of new information and content created since 8-8-8-2014 contains SCP-3002. SCP-3002 has displayed an extreme level of adaptability preventing it from ever having been fully contained. In addition to this, several key Foundation employees were effectively being controlled by SCP-3002 since its initial discovery. With access to internal Foundation procedures and plans, she was able to avoid being properly detected or analyzed for some time. Document 3002-6 Due to the widespread contamination of SCP-3002, Containment is impossible. Remaining staff members may submit proposals for the termination of the anomaly. Proposal, contact known groups and persons of interest for additional aid. Dr. Kent Mayfield. Command response, approved, 9-4. Follow-up. Global Occult Coalition, no response. Unusual Incidents Unit, response. 05-1 confirmed the presence of SCP-3002. Response destroyed. Mana Charitable Foundation, no response. The Horizon Initiative, no response. GRU Division P, no response. Office for the Reclamation of Islamic Artifacts, no response. Prometheus Labs Incorporated, no response. The Chaos Insurgency, Response and Unintelligible Vocal Recording. Anderson Robotics, No Response. Marshall Carter and Dark, Response. 05-1 confirmed the presence of SCP-3002. Response destroyed. Are we cool yet? Response A box filled with several hard drives and digital storage devices containing copies of and plans for several anomalous art pieces. The Serpent's Hand Response A message reading We are unable to offer support this time. We fear she is among us now. WL Nobody Response A small note reading You should have expected this. Proposal Destroy all information and contaminated people. Repopulate the Earth using SCP-2000, Dr. Connor Teach. Command Response, Declined, 2-8. Follow-up, No Follow-up. Due to the massive distance between our current location and the location of SCP-2000 and the fact that no communication has been established with the site, our current consensus is that SCP-2000 and its staff have been contaminated. We do not feel the risk is worth the attempt. AVLS 05-1 Proposal Create an anti-meme capable of suppressing SCP-3002 for a temporary amount of time. Dr. Kent Mayfield Command Response Approved 5-4 Follow-up An anti-meme capable of suppressing all memetic threats was created based on the memetic countermeasures used by RISA. During testing, it was discovered the anti-meme had no effect on SCP-3002. It is believed that the anomaly altered the anti-meme in a similar method to how it normally affects memories. 
as SCP-3002 seemed to be able to emulate an anti-meme, we began investigation into the possibility that it was capable of hiding itself as an anti-meme within a person's mind, effectively making them an unconscious agent for it. Following this lead, we discovered more than six people were contaminated in this fashion, including multiple members of the O5 command. C. Green, O5-8 Proposal, initiate the Ganymede protocol. We need to start over. Dr. Connor Teach Command response, declined, 2-6 Follow-up, no follow-up there is no reason to enact such a drastic action. C. Green, O5-8 Proposal, investigate further into Project Lethe in an attempt to find a possible way to stop her. Dr. Connor Teach Command response, declined 1-3 Follow-up, no follow-up There is no reason to investigate further into that project. Nothing additional will be gleaned from it. In addition, the O5 command has reasonable cause to believe you have been contaminated. Termination will occur shortly. A. Veles, O5-1 Proposal, restart. Command response, no consensus, 1-1. Follow-up, field left blank. Thank you for tuning in, we hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.